Hello and welcome. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you here for our April poetry celebration. We have ahead of us a month of poetry, reading it, writing it, enjoying it, and connecting through poetry. And I'm delighted that you're going to be with us. My name is Kate Chadbourne. I'm a poet and writer, and I'm hosting this celebration in conjunction with the journal makers, Jumping Fox Design. And this is one of their beautiful journals that I'll be using for my poetry writing over this next month. So more about them in a moment. So what's in store is a month of videos of connecting here uh, on YouTube where we'll be listening to poems that you write, uh, hearing poems from some poetry guides with a little bit of a different theme this year. If you joined us last year, I'll explain in a moment. Um, and as last year, we'll be having some poetry sparks, some ideas that you might like to take up for writing your own poems, and also some poetry dares, just to spice things up. As last year as well, there are prizes for taking part. And those are the beautiful journals made by Jumping Fox Design. So I want to start today. Um, we're, you're going to have an opportunity to send me poems, but I did get a couple of poems ahead of this week uh, since our first video is going live on the 5th of April. Um, some friends were excited to jump in and send poems. And I just want to read a couple of them uh, just to, for the pleasure of it and to whet your appetite. So one of them is by a young poet called Declan Bundy, whose poems I have been enjoying so much for the last few years now. He shares with us this poem called A Tree. Declan is, I believe, eight years old. A tree. A tree is like a little magic staircase to another world. A little one's world, perhaps. And maybe we could all see it this way. I love that poem. A tree is like a magic staircase to another world. Yes. Now his mother, just by, I don't know if it's by pure chance, um, his mother, Anne, whom I love, wrote a poem called Fairy Tree. And I don't know if, if her poem was inspired by Declan's poem or if they're both thinking about trees. Here's her poem. Fairy tree, there once was a seed, a magic seed, which contained the heartbeat of the world. It found refuge in the land protected by the man from the south, cardinal direction of love. So there's magic in both of those. And my friend June Ruth sent, I love this poem, uh, it's just a, a perfect little image, especially for April. It's called Tulips. The busyness of my life is reflected by scattered tulip blossoms in the vase going in many directions. Who doesn't understand that? June Ruth is a wonderful shanachi. Uh, she's a storyteller and a singer and a poet. And finally, one more poem that I really wanted to share with you is by my friend Lynn. Um, Lynn's sister-in-law uh, died recently and she wrote this poem and I'm just going to jump ahead and say our theme this month is connection and uh, I see so much of that desire to connect and keep connecting in this beautiful poem. It's called Love of Crows. We were to be old crows together, calling out inappropriately, picking up shiny things, birds of a feather. But you saw the shining ring. You saw it and caught it, brazenly, unexpectedly, without even a cry. You flew from us and we, we swung on in the circle, un unable to fly with you, unable to stop circling. Today, the sun beamed through dark clouds in a spotlight upon me and followed me across the field. Tonight, that light lingers in my dark room. 
your laughter on the porch, your joy in life, your love of crows. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So thank you. Thank you, everyone who's already sent me poems. Uh, and thank you to all of you who would like to send me poems. So let me explain how to do that. So if you would like to send me poems, uh, send them to me by Friday at five o'clock. I'll be making these videos on Sundays and I'll be sharing them on Mondays. So if you send them up by Friday at five o'clock, I'll have plenty of time to read everything. And I, I will read everything. I do read everything and I love it. Um, send them to my email address, kate at katechadbourne.com. I'll put that in the comment section below. And I'd be so grateful if it's possible for you to send your poems in one packet each week. So you can send one or you can send seven. You're very welcome to send as many poems as you like. But if it's possible to put them all in one letter, that would just help me kind of keep myself clear. Uh, no worries if not, but if you can, that's a help. So I can't wait to read your poems. Send them along. I'll be reading some poems from, from all of us, our, our circle, every single week. And I'll be excited to share something from you for sure. So I... As I mentioned, our theme this time around is connection. I'm so excited about the way one creative spark sparks another creative spark and out and out and out it goes forever. Uh, that to me is delightful and exciting and also so full of possibility and the possibility of flourishing in this world. So I want to start today with uh, last year, our first poet guide was Joy Harjo, who is actually our current poet laureate. And this is a book that was given to me by my dear friends Colleen and Sarah. Uh, I read from another book by Joy last year called Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings. And this year, uh, I wanted to share something that Joy wrote, which connects with another poet. Now, just to put that in context, I want to tell you just a little bit about this book. So, Joy is of the, I'm, I hope I'm saying this right, the Muscogee uh, Native American tribe. Uh, she lives in Oklahoma, but as, as I understand, originally her people came from Alabama. And at the beginning of her book, she writes this. On May 28th, 1830, President Andrew Jackson unlawfully signed the Indian Removal Act to force move southeastern people from our homelands to the west. We were rounded up with what we could carry. We were forced to leave behind houses, printing presses, stores, cattle, schools, pianos, ceremonial grounds, tribal towns, churches. We witnessed immigrants walking into our homes with their guns, Bibles, household goods and families, taking what had been ours as we were surrounded by soldiers and driven away like livestock at gunpoint. There were many trails of tears of tribal nations all over North America, of indigenous peoples who were forcibly removed from their homelands by government forces. The indigenous people who are making their way up from the Southern Hemisphere are a continuation of the Trail of Tears. May we all find the way home. So that is kind of the headpiece of this book. And the book is beautiful, amazing, heartbreaking, worth reading. But as I read along, I came to this poem and it's called A Refuge in the Smallest of Places. And here's our, here's our point of contact. Here is her dedication for this poem. For Emily Dickinson, one of the singers, and for all those fleeing on those ancient migration trails north for home. Now, she mentions that this happened to her people in 1830, and that's the year Emily Dickinson was born. Emily Dickinson born in 1830, Joy Harjo born in 1951. So this is the poem called A Refuge in the Smallest of Places. Someone sang for me, and no one else could hear it. When I had given up 
and made knife marks on my arm, or drank and gave myself away, or was given. Someone sang for me, and no one else could hear it. When demons came with rope and cages to take my children from me and imprison us, someone sang for me, and no one else could hear it. Now I am here in the timeless room of lost poetry, gathering up the destroyed and forgotten, because of the songs someone sang that no one else could hear but me. So that gets me. And the very next page, she quotes in full, I'm nobody, who are you? by Emily Dickinson. I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell, they'd advertise, you know. How dreary to be somebody, how public, like a frog, to tell one's name the live long June to an admiring bog. And at the bottom of that page, she writes, Emily Dickinson was six years old when Manawi, who is her forefather, and his family began the immigration to the West. So that is our first connection. And I, it really gave me the idea for our, for our theme this month. I was startled and excited by it. And that's the potential. That's the potential of creativity and poetry new nodes of intersection. Now, just one more from Emily. Uh, and from this, I hope to give you your poetry spark uh, for this week. You know this one. A word is dead when it is said, some say. I say, it just begins to live that day. A word is dead when it is said, some say, I say, it just begins to live that day. Thank you, Joy Harjo. Thank you, Emily Dickinson. Thank you to Declan. Thank you to Anne. Thank you, June Ruth. And thank you, Lynn. And thank you, Lynn's sister-in-law. Those poems are beautiful, aren't they? So here's our spark. I would like to offer this invitation. If you want to write this, write a poem that has two pieces. Some say, and then I say. Some say, the first part, I say. Some say, right? A word is dead when it is said, right? Some say, I say, it just begins to live that day. That's exciting. So I want to share with you a little bit of, so this is the journal that I'll be using. And I love writing by hand. As I mentioned in my last video, I like just to write a quick drafty poem. Um, I'm already in here. When I have a beautiful journal like this, I sometimes think, oh no, uh, I'm going to wreck it or I'm going to write drivel in it or I'll disappoint myself. So the best thing to do is quick mess it up right in it. I put my name in it right away, a little strip of washi tape, and I April Poetry Celebration, April 2021. And then I just begin to write messy drafts. And I will just show you a little bit of, of that. Here is the very first of the messy drafts, and you can see how messy it is. And I don't mind about that at all. So I'm using this, this journal, I'm, I'm using the, there's a table of contents here. Um, I've divided my journal up into drafts and notes that I'm just to sort of help myself sometimes. I like to look up words. <laughs> I'm just like that. Uh, revisions when I actually get around to revising poems and then notes about what we're doing and maybe poets I want to include and that sort of thing. So. I love using this journal. I love using these little bookmarks. It's just deluxe. So I want to read to you my first poem of the month. And I was thinking about connection 
and I was thinking about the way things touch and affect each other. The, just the way one poem can touch and affect another poet. But everything really does. So my, my poem is called, When I Look, the Evidence is Right Here. Lichen wraps a warm green sleeve over the rainy maple. The furnace rumbles on like a watchful father. In every room, the books offer their helpful suggestions. And when I close my eyes to nap, the old cat lays his small body along the length of mine. The desire to touch, to impart, runs us all. Even at night, when the wind takes the house in her arms, the rough rocking comes through to us as tenderness. So off we go, my friends. Off we go. We've started. So again, a poetry spark uh, could be to write a poem that has that structure. Some say, and then I say. You could also, if you like, take a leaf out of Declan and, and Anne's book and write a poem about a tree. That's an alternative. And I'd love to give you a poetry dare. Since our theme is connection, I want to just offer you a dare to tell somebody that you're writing poems for National Poetry Month, for April Poetry Celebration. Just tell somebody. The re Why do that? Well, I think courage is catching. I think creativity is catching. I think uh, vitality is wonderfully catching. These are the kinds of things we want to transmit. And uh, sometimes I think it's amazing when, when we tell people we're writing poems and then somebody says, you know, I'd like to do that too. So it's worth it. So that's my dare to you. So again, send me poems if you would like uh, by Friday night at five o'clock this coming Friday. So that would be the ninth, I believe. And uh, if you will, you know, put them in a little packet to kate at katechadborn.com. You've got your dare, you've got your poetry spark, and also I'd be so grateful if you would, if you like it, like this video, um, subscribe, share it, uh, and leave a comment. If you're so moved, inspire us. You can put a poem right in the comments or you can just um, say what you're thinking about with, with poetry this month. So thank you so much for jumping in today. Thank you for your presence and for your encouragement. And I'm excited to see you next week. And I wish you a wonderful week of poems.